What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Dice House from their DCO commentary. I'm bringing this video to let you all know, hey, I'm back. Made it back safe. All good to go. Uh, back from SOE Live, back from Vegas. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit everything that went on in Vegas and everything and uh, share with you guys you know, everything what I learned. Uh, not just, uh, you know, go over a little bit what you all saw from the keynote and any of uh, the other info, you know, they put out, but also talk about... Uh, what all um you know i you know i was able to uh, information i was able to get from all the other panels and stuff too that was there because you know they they live streamed the keynote but they didn't really uh um live stream uh many of the other panels and all that trex has got um the uh, pvp panel up on his um channel i definitely highly recommend you guys go check that out on trex lights channel um if you uh don't know where his channel's at you know he's one of the featured channels my feature channels list on my main page anyways uh go over uh like day one and everything like that day one i got there um because i'm on the community council and all that you know i got to um, have a nice um dinner with the devs uh wednesday night when we were there uh fortunately i cannot talk to you guys about anything that was discussed there because <laughs> it's all because i don't want them to sue me um <laughs> however uh it was it was really fun to uh, get to sit there and talk with those guys, and um, I gotta tell you, um, they every single one of the devs that was there, uh, um, Locke, Spord, Tunzo, Jens, um, Larry Liberty, uh, and Meps. You know, Meps was there too. Um, every single one of those guys has got a deep seated passion for this game, and you know, wanting it to do well and wanting it to be, you know, a game that everybody enjoys playing uh, because they play it too. So if anybody ever tells you that the devs don't care or you get that impression, trust me, that is not the case. All right. All right. Putting that to bed though. All right. Let's talk about what I can talk about with you guys. Uh, for starters, the uh, dev uh, meet the dev panel was Friday. It was a great panel and all that. I had a lot. There was a lot of people showed up there for it. Um, I got to meet a lot of um, players um, after that panel, and it was really cool. Um, for starters, uh, some of the things they uh, talked about and everything, some of the questions that were asked. Um, they are looking into um, the possibility. I mean, not not saying it's going to happen, but they're looking at uh, possibly making the uh, broker a shared broker between both factions, heroes and villains. So. Um, I know, uh, prices on the hero side tend to get a bit outrageous because, you know, the population is larger and everything and the prices on the villain side are a lot lower. Um, hopefully that will help to, uh, stabilize things out, you because, know, you know, or at least, you know, make it so that, you know, you don't have to, uh, go from, uh, being, uh, you know, take, take, you know, send your money from your hero over to your villain just so you can get something off the broker on the villain side. Um, but yeah, they were looking at that. Also, uh. Um, Larry Liberty was really talking up a lot about the companion app that they're going to be releasing with the PS4. Uh, it's sounding like they, they're, they're putting a lot into this and all that. Um, you know, Jens is, uh, you know, mentioned, um, that, you know, they reached out to the community council about, uh, you know, things that, you know, that should be on, that could be on the, um, app as far as like guides and stuff like that. Uh, also, you know, like video guides and stuff, you know, just little things and all that to help, uh, new players or, you know, even, you know, players that are fairly, you know, fairly new people have been playing the game for a little while, help players out with, uh, you know, little tips and everything on, on playing the game and everything. Um, also with that app, something I think is really cool and, uh, <laughs> but it can be a little creepy at the same time is, um, you're going to actually be able to access your league's voice chat uh with this app so you know you have a phone and everything you have the app on your phone you'll be able to uh you know hit the app on turn on go to your league's voice chat and all that and uh, sit there and talk to your league without even be being on the game also a little feature that you know is possible for uh uh ps4 that they're looking at maybe doing is a uh remote play for the uh ps vita um now this will be like remote play like you know you'll have to be you know near your ps3 in order to, um, to do this and all that. You can't, you know, like, hook up to it, you know, like, through a Wi-Fi or, or, I mean, it'll be, it'll be wireless and everything, wireless and all that, but, I mean, you won't be able to, like, you know, take it, you know, 
for a car ride and while you're farming or anything like that. Uh, they're not look. They're not um, going to do a direct port to the Vita. It just uh, isn't feasible. But uh, remote play is something that they are, you know, they are looking at maybe doing. So I mean, that's really cool. Uh, something else that uh, um, was brought up there was uh, the uh, power interactions canceling out. Uh, you know, so, you know, you know, you go in there with, uh, you know, say you go in with like two fire DPS, two or three fire DPS into a raid or something like that, and you know, the power interactions keep getting canceled out between you know one, the the two or the three of them. Well, that's going to, they're looking at fixing that, because that is not intentional, which I think is fantastic. Um, I honestly wish they had looked at it sooner, um, because this has been, like, something that's been in the game for a while. But uh, I'm glad to see that they're, uh, they're going to take a look at it and uh, fix that. Um, the question was also brought up about uh, um, in-game guides. And, uh, you know, putting on little events and everything, like, you know, like little, little missions and everything, you know, they have a, um, uh, you know, not necessarily a player, but, um, say like, you know, they had like a GM come in and say, Hey, you know, um, you know, this, you know, NPC is attacking, you know, this area and all that. If you show up and you defeat him, you know, you get a little prize, you know, maybe, maybe it'll be just like, you know. I don't know, maybe it's, a, you know, like a stack of zero sodas or something like that. You know, something, you know, something little like that. Well, I mean, I think that would be something that would be really cool if they added in here. And if they want to add in bigger prizes, hey, that's cool. That zero soda thing was just like me totally pulling something out of the air. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, they also talked a little about uh, DLC 7. Now, I know a lot of people got upset about Yen's talking about, you know, them um, decreasing the difficulty on DLC 7. They're not going to noob it up or they're not going to make it so that, you know, they're, they're not dumbing it down or anything like that. It's just, you know, basically just, you know, taking the, taking the volume down from 11 to about 9.5, I would say, maybe 10, <laughs> not 10 to 9.5, I would say is basically what they're doing. Um, so, um, that's you know that's that's basically what they're gonna do that. And now I'm no for some reason like I was the only one that caught this. I mean I was the only one that caught this, but I was the only one that you know at the um, at live that was actually you know kind of took this a little seriously only because I know how Yens is, but you know maybe he's trolling. I don't know. Maybe he's not. Uh, there he did hint about a possible new movement mode that's gonna be based on static shock. Whether that's true or not, I am not sure. I mean, it could be just Yen's trolling, again, like I said, because he does like to do that at times. Um, but I mean, that sounds like something that's really cool. When that when that's coming, no idea, no idea whatsoever. When that is coming, if it is, all right. Uh, the uh, also talked about the uh, PVP season, which you know you guys learned um, from watching the uh, PVP panel. If you guys go to Trex's video. Um, it's coming in around DLC nine time. Uh, you know, it's going to be. You know, you're not. We're not going to have to go through four sets of gear again. Okay, they're just going to have um, basically um, one set of gear that you're going to have to earn with marks. All right. So basically, what the, the way it's going to work is kind of similar to season one. This is me speculating on this one. But I'm pretty sure is what it is. Uh, they're going to start off season two with they're going to have like a tier zero gear, okay, that you know everybody can you know buy with cash like they did with the Archangel, like with, set with um, season one here. Um, you're going to have your uh, Archangel set, you know, the tier zero gear, all right. The current Vengeance gear will be like the tier 0 0.5, and then the tier one gear, um, or the, the actual will be CR 85, I believe. Um, yeah, CR85 gear will be the actual gear that we get with the, um, PvP marks, alright? So, there's that. Also, um, I know a lot of people were asking about, you know, like, you know, the Gunslinger, um, chest piece, and, you know, like the Tier 1 sets, style, um, styles, you know, because, you know, you got those feats, those 50 point feats for, like, you know, the Raptor Tech, you know, that Robin suit, and the the Hawkman suit and um, 
I believe it's the Captain Marvel suit, the, you know, the Shazam suit or whatever. Uh, those styles are not going to be taken out of the game. They're going to reintroduce them somewhere else in the game. He did not, they did not specify where, though. Um, let's see here. Other stuff going on. I was like, okay, everybody saw the keynote, right? Everybody excited about the keynote. Uh, I was ecstatic over the keynote, uh, basically because, you know, we learned a lot there. Um, you know, we're going to be getting a possibility, we're going to be getting some base, some layer PvE content. So we're going to look forward to, look forward to some Iconics right into our layers and everything, which I think is really cool. It'd be nice to have, like, you know, a challenge, you know, introduced where, you know, they're coming in, they're trying to bust up our layers and stuff. Um, the uh, League Halls, all right, you know, the... Uh, Halls of Power DLC, where we were going to get our league halls and our league bases uh, and everything. That is no longer going to be a DLC. That's going to be introduced as free content. This, I think, is fantastic news because, honestly, as a DLC, that would have been very lacking in content um, <laughs> if they introduced it as a DLC. So I'm glad to see that they are uh, not trying to uh, introduce it as a DLC, and it's going to be free. It's going to be free for everybody. That also includes the... Uh, um also includes the uh you know the armories and the league ui update and everything all that stuff is going to be free um the way we're talking about is like you know you'll be able to get everybody's going to get you know, like one armory and then if you want more armories uh you can uh, purchase them on the marketplace which you know i think is fine um i know i'm probably gonna buy at least two or three <laughs> um but the way those armories are going to work is basically you'll be able to um, you place them in your base and all that. You're going to be able to set up, you know, your your um, gear, your uh, loadout, your weapon, um, and I believe even your styles. Uh, and you're going to be able to switch between those, in and out of those, uh, whenever you want to. And they're looking at possibly doing it, you know, you being able to do it while you're in combat. So, you know, say, you know, you queue into a 1v1 lair duel and... You know, you've got, you know, a debuff. You're, you know, you queue in there as a DPS, and, you know, I say I, I queue in there, and I've got Swoop in there to debuff the tanks and all that, but I actually end up going against the healer. I can switch my loadout out with my, or with, using my armory option uh, to a loadout that actually has the um, downdraft in there so I can debuff the healer. So I think it's really cool that they're doing that. Um Let's see, Sons of Trigon. Sons of Trigon was the big one. They actually had an entire panel for that. Um, lots and lots of stuff coming with uh, Sons of Trigon. Um, you know, of course, you know, we got getting the, the Celestial um, Power, getting uh, Cheetah and Donna Troy for Legends, um, Wonder Woman and Cersei will be available for uh, from the Marketplace. Wonder Woman is going to be using the Shield, and Cheetah is going to be the first super speed tune they introduce into... Uh, um, Legends. So this is going to be interesting to see. Maybe hopefully someday we'll get to see uh, Professor Zoom or the Flash in there. You know, one of the Flashes at least. Um, Lord knows there's like five or six of them out there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe Kid Flash or uh, Impulse. You know, whatever his name is. Um, those guys, I say whatever his name is. Like, I don't care. Um, <laughs> also, uh, we're getting, with Sons of Trigon, we're getting duos and alerts and some solo missions. All these are going to be Tier 5. Now, I know during the SourceCast um, live stream we did, uh, Sport was there, and he said that um, it was all um, CR, CR requirement was 86. Uh, he contacted Trex and all that, and, you know, make a correction, um, and actually posted on the forums as well. The uh, CR requirement for this new Tier 5 content is 84. So for the solos, the duos, and the... Uh, alerts it's it's a combat rating of 84 to get in there uh as far as you know what kind of gear and everything we're getting um it's going to be tier 5 gear uh there's two new sets that are being um, introduced one for hero one for villain um however you know and you're going to be able to use uh marks of uh, reality to uh get those um get that suit um as far as the uh, style for the you know opposite faction you're actually going to be able to you know get a chance to earn that other style by uh, doing the Raven Bounty. I believe it's once a week. Um, Raven doing the Raven Bounty. There's uh, you know two sides to Raven. You know if you pay attention to the, to the lore and everything. There's two sides to Raven. There's a good and a bad. There's a bad side. Villains and heroes are going to have this bounty um, on both sides. So 
you need a chance to uh, get the uh, opposing faction's uh, um, armor and style set uh, by doing that bounty, which I think is really cool because you can mix and match and everything. Uh, let's see here, a few other things they talked about. Oh yeah, the um, they uh, were talking about with the league halls. Uh, they are introducing introducing the statuary. Um, as the ends called it, where there you're going to be able to put these statues in the layer to paint on which stat you're looking for, because they're introducing leaderboards for PvP and PVE. How exactly you know what exactly you know these uh, stats or main things you know that you're going to be able to um, uh, you know advertise you know in uh, your le in your um, league halls. Not positive yet. I'm pretty sure it's going to be you know, like you know most kills. You know it's going to reset every 30 days. Um, so it's not like, you know, this is going to be like one of those long-lasting, you know, leaderboard type things. But um, I think this is really cool. This is something, you know, everybody's been looking for for a while. Um, and, of course, you know, they talked about their future DLCs. Now, they also talked about the formats for these future DLCs. Um, by formats, I mean, you know, the content-wise of what they're going to contain. Uh, you know, like Origin Crisis was, you know, a big group DLC. You know, it had two raids and all that, two um, ops, and, you know, yeah, we had the two challenges and everything. Uh, but they're also going to start introducing these um, small group DLCs, as they call them. So, which is, you know, like what we're getting with um, with Sons of Trigon, which is mostly, you know, challenges, duos, and alerts. So, that's why... Uh, that's the the type of format they're looking at doing. And I th actually, I, I, I actually, I kind of think that's cool, you know, because like they said there at the uh, in one of the panels that the majority of the players um, of the game do the uh, smaller group content, do the alerts and the duos and stuff. Um, so you know, they're 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 you know looking out for uh, both sides of the um, field right there. Uh, however, yes, I, I I definitely need to talk about this. The uh, new um, uh, DLC is coming out, um, starting with uh, DLC 9. They're um, going to start um, trying to introduce DLCs with like a three-part three story arc to them, okay? But they're going to be staggering, staggering them. So we're looking at DLC 9 is going to start the, uh, is going to be the first part of the uh, War of the Light. Uh, it's, you know, something going on with the Lantern Cores. And when I, by, when I mean cores, I mean like all of them, okay? Okay. Uh, DLC 9 is going to introduce the Blue Lanterns into uh, the game. Um, whether or not Blue Lantern is going to be the new power with DLC 9, I don't know. Um, it was talked about, you know, it was asked and talked about uh, whether or not um, DLC 9 was going to introduce the new tank power and all that. And with them introducing the Blue Lanterns, obviously, you know, you would think, you know, Blue Lantern would be the optional choice and all that for a tank power. Um, however, talking with Trex, who is like a lantern expert, um, or believes he is, uh, <laughs> he told me that, um, lanterns are a passive, um, core. They don't, you know, they don't attack or anything like that. Um, he doesn't think they'd fit as a tank power. I don't know. We'll have to see how they work it out, um, if they do introduce them as a tank power. Uh, me personally, I don't know. And like I said, I'd like to see, I'd like to see which way it goes. Um... Of course, you know, I don't see many villains being able to be Blue Lanterns because, you know, the whole hope thing doesn't really mesh with Blue Lanterns or with villains. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, DLC 10 um, is going to uh, be the Amazon Fury, loosely titled Amazon Fury. And obviously it's going to deal with the Amazons and all that. Waging war on man's world. And you're going to be helping Wonder Woman um, figure out exactly why her mother is uh, going nuts and uh, declaring war on Man's World. That's going to be another um, three-part story arc right there. This, of course, is the, followed up by DLC 11, which is going to be, is actually going to be called Halls of Power. And this is the one that is going to introduce, finally, for everybody out there who's been dying to have him, Dark Side. That's right. It's going to start the storyline. It's going to you know may introduce him, or it's going to start the storyline. It's going to introduce Dark Side into uh, the game. Uh, players are going to get to go to Apocalypse and New Genesis in this DLC. Um, I know this is the one that everybody is excited for the most. Um, let's see here. Oh man, they talked about a few other things. Oh, the Celestial Power. Um, 
you know, it's uh, inspired by, I believe one of the inspired by is uh, Spectre um, and everything. Uh, Celestial Power, the way it's going to work is they're talking about how you're going to be able to channel, chain the powers together, kind of like you do with uh, Hard Light. Um, but this is going to be kind of different um, because you can chain a cursed power into a blessed power and get different interactions and everything. You know, the interactions are solely self-contained with uh, Celestial. So, you know, you know, you're not going to be able to get any uh, power interactions off uh, other players on different power tunes at all. Um, and it's a healer. Some of the heals are based on the damage. So this is going to be a game changer here for PvP, I think. This is this may be like the this is like the first like real combat um, healer power that they that they're introducing into the game. Um, this is going to be really interesting. I actually honestly, even though I know they are taking suggestions, uh, looking for suggestions right now for um, sorcery and nature um, updates and everything on on the official forums. Um, I honestly see a lot of sorcery guys switching over to this power when it gets released. Um, I know there's people going to switch over to it anyways to test it out, but I honestly see a lot of sorcery guys switching over to it simply because, especially the PvP ones, because I honestly see them actually, you know, wanting to test this stuff out and uh, seeing how it's going to go. Because, like I said, a lot of the powers are based on, you know, how much damage you do with, um, healing this anyways that's all i got time for right now um if you guys got any questions about anything i talked about or anything you know that uh you saw in the other videos that have been put out there and everything like that i'd be more than happy to answer them for you um let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do so by giving it a thumbs up it's great to be back olympus is finishing up this week i'm looking forward to getting back into the game hitting it hard with my league and all that uh anyways let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do so by giving it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so already please subscribe until next time you guys all take care